The All Black legend that is Murray Maxstead, 34 consecutive tests and over 70 games for the All Blacks. Once he got his jersey, didn't give it up till he actually gave it up. Iran's insight. Max, welcome back to the show. I know that you're moving house, so thanks very much for your time. Yeah, thanks, Murray. No problem. This loose Ford trio, your area of expertise in the Iran's insight is what we want you to provide. Look, my amateur eye looking on this, Max, shoot me down in flames, mate, but I just don't know whether, you know, listening to you over the weeks and years, I've had you on the programmes, uh, whether the balance is right. Artie comes back in at eight. I know that you're a big fan of Papa Lee. Um, he's at seven. Akira at six. I'm not so sure he is the workhorse that we need. I know you like Scott Barrett, and I, I know that he's an 80-minute man. Is Akira the guy? Well, firstly, before I answer that question, I'm going to pose pose a question to the people listening. The the loose forward trio is a it has to be a balanced unit. It's just as and, a, and an example would be say Conrad Smith and Ma Nonu in the midfield, complementary skills, and that's what you need in the loose forward trio. So, it's very hard to pick one player and isolate that one player without saying the other two guys are. So really, I think you pick them as a trio, and that's what I don't think the, the selectors have done. And I hope I'm wrong. I mean, they can prove me wrong in the weekend, but I'm very worried um, about this game against the Wallabies now because I'm not sure this is the best loose forward trio we can put on the park. Um, listening to Ian Foster, though, he's saying there's competition for the positions. Well, it clearly is because they keep on changing them. Um, you know, so maybe maybe this is a last chance for one or two of these players, I don't know. Um, they but Nick, but hang on a second, second but, if you're, but why would you, if, if that's the case, if it's a last chance, why would you use a test against Australia, which is, you know, such a vital test for us in terms of the progression of the team, the consistency, why would you use this test as that? Surely the Japan test would have been the test, wouldn't it? Well, you can't test players against Japan. You see, that's my point. You can only find out um, whether the players are up to it when they play the best. And then, then the best stand up. And, you know, like, I'll give you an example of last week that I've played Satutu. Um, and that was against the best, you know, against a very, very good Australian side with character. And it's building. It's going to get stronger. And, um, you know, they didn't pick Satutu this week. So, therefore, in their eyes, he didn't measure up. Yes. But they've, they gave him an opportunity against the best. And maybe they're doing the same. I don't know. I'm not. Uh, I'm not. I'm not in the camp. But what I do know is that it's got to be a balanced combination. Now, the, the role of the loose forwards, particularly two out of the three loose forwards from uh, from scrums, is is about they've got to be hunters and gatherers. They have to be focused on the ball. They are specialists at, at attacking the ball wherever it is, putting pressure on the ball. So if the Wallabies win a scrum and the ball moves to the open side like it generally does, then our open side flanker and our number eight have got to hunt that ball. You know, And I know there's a lot of different patterns in defence, but those two guys have got to chase that ball if it goes open side. So you need guys that are really good at that um, and putting pressure on. Now, Sam Kane is very good at it. You saw him last week. He had a, a great game. He, he was everywhere. Um, I think he's got to be a bit more selective how they use him. He shouldn't be doing absolutely everything, but he was bloody good. And Artie Sevilla is very good. And I actually think the next one on the line is, is Blackadder, to be frank. Okay. Um, but I don't see Papier Lee in that role. Papier Lee is a great ball runner, and he's tough, and he's a good defender. Now, to me, that's a Jerome Kano, yeah, so a Jerry six. Collins. Yeah. If you want to go back to further, Mark Shaw, You've got to be tough and abrasive and hard. This is a physical game. It's not for bloody... Uh, what a ton of same... We're not playing ago. tiddlywinks, not, mate. We're not playing tiddlywinks. That's what he said. Tiddly. Yeah. And our number six has to be a bit of a bloody machine, you know. He's got to be a, have a real hard work rate. He's got to be abrasive and aggressive and, and knock a few guys around yep. and do a bit of damage when he's got the ball in sure. hand. Now, Akira's, Akira's good with the ball in hand. Does he aggressively put the opposition players on the deck is no. he relentless no well, I don't think so I mean that, that all, all the listeners can pass their own judgement on that but uh, one thing that we do do um, when we specialise in, in positional play and loose forwards is we count the number of times you get your hands on the ball so if you play if you play as an open side flanker or a number 8 you should be get, touching the ball over 20 times in a game and, and as a blind side flanker less 
but it depends on the role that they are playing him in. Now, the, the, the role they're obviously playing him in is they want him to run with the ball. And I heard Foster say he's, he's good in defence. Well, I don't know if he is. He hasn't proven that to me. I haven't seen him around the field knocking guys over uh, like the other people we've just spoken about. So, you know, he's got a lot to prove to me that he actually is the right guy at Blindside Flanco, in my opinion. So I am worried there. Okay. Um, Papia Lee, I don't think is a hunter and a gatherer and putting pressure on the ball. You know, he sort of, he plays a role of often staying on one side of the field, you know, and he doesn't, he's not relentlessly on that ball. And that's to do with the All Black tactics, of course, but I don't see him in that role. So I think they've got it wrong. I really do. Artie Sevilla, well, he's he's different kettle of fish because he is equally as good at open side flanker and number eight. But... The big weakness in this loose forward trio is that we've got no natural line-out forwards. Yeah. And we and for as long as I can remember, it was back as far as my day, you had to have one really good line-out forward, not only to win our ball, but to stop them winning the ball. Now, in the line-out today, if you're going to compete at the top level against the best, you have to have a minimum of three really good line-out forwards to compete against the opposition, to compete against Australia. When I look at the Australian loose forward trios, they have got two line-out forwards on their loose forwards. You know, the, uh, this guy Wilson they brought in is, is about 6'6", six, six, I think. He's 6'5", it might be, but he's tall and he's competitive. Um, you know, and, the, and, and they've got the same number eight who's now playing blindside flagging. So they've got two line-out jumpers there and two locks. So they, they've got they've got more power at winning the ball. And this game against Australia, it's going to be about possession. Because both teams are good at attack. There's no doubt about it. Now our back line's quite devastating, I reckon. But if we don't win enough ball, we're not going to win this game. And the loose forwards are an integral part of winning that ball, whether it's in the air or whether it's hunting um, the breakdown area. And those are the two areas that I'm bloody worried about when okay. I saw the selection of these. But- Murray Mexted is with us. I'll go back. I'm writing a couple of names down here. And I've always thought the traditional role of a number six in all-black rugby. Okay, let's look at our two greatest, well, the, the World Cup winning loose forward trios, where you had AJ at six, you had Buck at eight, and you had Iceman at seven. And then, you you know, you talk about Jerome at six and Karen at eight and Richie at seven. And both of those guys, AJ and Jerome, a lot of the work they did is not the flashy stuff, which is what you're talking about, but it frees up your number seven to play that gathering role, doesn't it? This is what I'm worried about. I'm worried about if, if Akita doesn't stump up there, it takes away what, what we picked Papalihi to do. Or would you rather prefer that Artie was in, was in that role? Because this is the other thing that confuses me, and I needed to ask you about this, was See, Artie's a ball runner as, 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 as much as he can do everything else, but he's probably our best attacking weapon out of that loose forward trio. So don't you want to s- survive him and save him for that? Yeah, I mean, I, I, in, my, it's, in my opinion, it's absolutely vital that we have our best player playing at open side flanker. Um, and well, that's Artie. Artie Severe and Sam Kane. Yeah, so I would have put, I mean, I would have put Artie Severe in, into open side flanker. I reckon he's the only one that's in the team at the moment that's available that can do that job. And and you know, play him, and and maybe 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 play Jacobson because he's a out and out number eight with yep. a high work rate, and then you'd play Papier Lee on the blind side. That's how I'd okay. do it because Papier Lee is bloody good at running with the ball, supporting the ball carrier, and he's devastating with the ball in hand, and he's a bloody good defender. Yeah, well, that's what a blind side flanker yeah. supposed yeah. to do. <laughs> that that defines the role. Flanker. You just define the role. The thing with, with the thing with the Hoskins Satutu, he looked to me, Mix, I was watching the All-Whites play. I know it's a different game, but I was watching the All-Whites play last night against Australia and Brisbane. And one thing you noticed about our guys, a lot of our guys are playing at high-level professional leagues overseas, but they're on the bench. And I looked at Satutu and thought, you haven't played a minute of All-Black rugby. I know you've you know had appearances you know, for Counties Monaco, but he looked to me to be just short of a bit of match sharpness. And you've talked about this as well. There's no substitute for actually playing, is there? So I wonder whether, you know, we got to see the best of him last week, which we didn't, because he just simply hasn't been playing enough. Yeah, no, I'll tell you what, it, I call it edge. You've got to have the edge. And in a way, I do feel for Satutu because he may, you, you may be right. Um, he may have been lacking the edge because he's a beautiful footballer, you know. He's, he's um, running with his skill level, is running with the ball, his speed. He's a very skillful player. I didn't see his abra- I didn't see abrasiveness and aggression and real pressure and defence out of him last week, and maybe that's why he's not playing this week. 
Um, you know, but you've got to be playing. You've got to be in the. And you've got to feel the heat, buddy. You, you know, to operate, don't you? Well, I'll tell you what I would be doing. Yep. If I was Ian Foster right now, he's obviously Jason Ryan is obviously good at what he does. He's made a big difference with his selections to the front row, and we now look like we've got a new front row going forward, uh, which is really good. Um, and we've got two world-class locks, so I'm not even worried about that in any, any manner of form. In fact, that should be an ace in the pack. But the loose forward trio is, is absolutely vital. I think what Ian Foster should be doing is going to Kieran Reid and going to Richie McCaw and Jerome Kano, for that matter, and, and he just needs to go to one of them, actually, any one of those guys, and say, hey, listen, can you come on, come with me as a consultant for 24 hours? That's all he needs. He doesn't need any longer than that, just 24 hours. And and let's talk about how important this breakdown is and what the role of each of these three players are. I don't think that's been done. No, I don't think it has. Because, you know, they're all good footballers. And actually, it did happen to me um, shortly after I retired because, um, you know, Buck only played a couple of years after me. And, and I think the next time... Uh, and all, the All Blacks saying, I can't even remember who the selector was, but he rang me and said, can you come and spend 24 hours with our number eight of, on clearance of the ball, which I did. So there's nothing wrong with doing that. To, uh, no, 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 it's just, I mean, a, just, a, it's just embracing the, knowledge. That's all it is, isn't it? It's embracing more knowledge. And it's and embracing... knowledge. Yeah, yeah. And, how, and how our knowledge, yeah. And, they, and they care more than anybody else in the world. So, you know, you should be talking to Richie if you're not sure about... Yeah, you know, seven, six, and eight, and you know they might say, Ian might say, well, look, I, we are sure this is what we think is the best team. But if that's the case, why have they been changing the loose forwards yeah, right. left, right, and centre? Mm. So you know, I reckon this is a bloody. I'm really worried about today's that's tonight's question, game. Uh, All right, tomorrow night's game. game. Yeah. The yeah. other thing is, you got it yeah, right. With, you got it right with Geordie Barrett at twelve, mate. That's exactly. What they must have been listening to you because I mean, you've been you've been you've been banging that drum, and he's been put in there, which again raises the question. Roger Trevisar checks on the bench. Mix, if you're on the bench, what does that say? Does that mean that you sh- you are able and ready to play 80 minutes in case somebody goes down? Because that's what it says to me. That surely is what it defines by the fact you're selected, isn't it? I can't see how he is ready to play test match rugby against one of the best teams in the world. He's certainly not proven uh, in, as a, a midfield combination in comparison to the players that we've been playing. So you're not going to get me to support him, I'm sorry. Because he he is yet to prove it to me, and, and I'm sure. I mean, I've got nothing against the guy. I'm absolutely delighted that he's changed to rugby union. And I think he's going to be a bit of real asset by the time we get to the World Cup. But this is not the time to throw him in and and see if it, see if he, he can do it. I mean, maybe it is. Maybe that's what Ian Foster is doing with the loose forwards. Maybe he's saying we won the first game. We're going to hold the Bledisloe Cup. It's fifty fifty whether we win the championship. So let's see if these guys are good enough against the best. And so maybe he should have done what he's done and doing because I'm, I don't think he's saying to a Curry, you're our best blindside flank no. in the country, so no. we're playing you. He's saying, prove to me you are. Okay. Yeah, you know, prove to me you are. That's what he's saying. And same with Papua Lee, but as I've said a dozen times, Papua Lee is playing like a blindside flanker and we want him in the team, but I don't think we want him on open side. Just had a text come in which says, I recall an interview, Martin, you did with AJ years ago. He said that if you heard his name, then he wasn't doing his job. He said that if he wanted to be noticed and named, he'd put a seven on his back instead of a six. I remember that interview as a matter of fact. And I'm sure that there used to be a bit of banter about you guys. Six and eight is to the sevens, obviously the glory boy, isn't he? But you're right. It's that combination. Mix, we've got to get this right because... No, 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 Martin. Martin, the glory boy's the eight. Because... the, the seven has to be a worker. The seven and the six got to work their butts off. But actually, so does the eight. I mean, you know, uh, we we believe an eight should touch the ball 23 times. So he's got to be close where the action three is or four all the minutes, time. Yeah. Okay, three every three or four minutes. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, and it, and if you, if you look at the, the stats after the game, and if they did this stat that said how many times does the number eight touch the ball, Artie Severe would be in that bracket. Um, if you look at Papa Lee and uh, Awani, I don't think they would be in that bracket. All right, I'll let you get back to moving house, mate. How come you're doing your own moving today? I would have thought, come on, get somebody else to do it for you. You're not humping couches <laughs> still, are you, mate? Come on. I am, I am, but you've got to stay fit. Shit, otherwise you get old and die. Okay, fair enough. All right, Mix, love you to bits, mate. Thank you so much for that, as always. Murray Mix did the Iran's Insight. Just
just providing a level of expertise with us every time he comes on the program. Of course, just adores his game. Uh, still involved at the very highest level. Talks to all the, the leading world coaches and so forth. And th- those are his thoughts on that loose Ford trio.